What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. It is a beautiful, beautiful day in the garden today. It's about uh, 80 degrees. It's actually almost downright hot, but with the breeze, it feels amazing. We're out in the garden today, and I've got a couple special guests with me. This is MI Gardener. <laughs> got little Geneva. We're out here in the garden today planting out the garden. So I thought it'd be fun to bring you guys along and show you all what we're planting. We're going to get most of the garden planted out today. Despite the fact that our last frost day is not for, well, not technically for about another five to six days, I looked at the 10-day forecast and that's a little quick tip to kind of uh, to give you all is a lot of people wonder like, you know, well, when do I know that it's safe? Um, what if I want to try to take a risk and plant it out early? The best way I can tell you is by looking at the 10-day forecast. And if you're within 10 to 15 days of your last frost date, and the 10 day forecast shows nothing even close to a to a, a frost, you're generally fine. I don't wanna say you're 100% fine, but you're generally fine. Um, as you can tell, we actually have a, a storm brewing behind us. So we're gonna get going and uh, we're gonna get as much stuff planted as possible. All right, let's go. All right, so Mrs. My Gardener's planting out lettuce and we're gonna do uh, about half a bed of lettuce. These ones we actually overwintered um, and we had to separate them. They were growing in our walkways and we, so we just split them up and we threw them in there for head lettuce. Now, you know, we don't usually do head lettuce, but I figured it'd be a good opportunity for us to uh, to grow some head lettuce just because well, it was already growing for us. It does need a little bit of water, but the one that, the one that grew in its spot that we kind of wanted looks amazing. This is tango lettuce. It's one of our favorite varieties of lettuce. There's also a little dandelion like growing <laughs> literally in the middle of it, but hey, it's really cool. It's nice to have you in the garden with me. Yeah. <laughs> the weather's really nice, right? Yes. <laughs> but it's like we were talking about earlier, it's like, it's almost, uh, it's almost hot. Super hot. There was like no transition really from spring to summer. Oh yeah, that's how it always goes. Yeah. Goes from 40s to 80s almost overnight. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Geneva? Is it hot? Yep. That's why I'm looking over here in the shade. Hey, you're smart. <laughs> So one of the battles that we've had this year that we've kind of vocalized is that we've really been battling a lot of Canadian thistle. It's something that we've been really battling over the past couple years. And this year we just kind of buckled down and said, this is the year that we get rid of it because we don't want it spreading into the garden. We don't want it spreading any further than it already has. And so we got down and basically myself, uh, Cindy, uh, Aiden, and even Aiden's mom um, came in here and we dug up most of the uh, most of this side of the garden, dug it up and really dug up a lot of those roots. And that is all Canadian thistle, believe it or not. All of it, a lot of it's even wilted down. There was about probably two full wheelbarrows full of just Canadian thistle. It's crazy. It is super invasive. Don't let it in your garden. But now that it's out of the garden, we're basically kind of a, in a wait and see approach where as we get some rain and some time, we're gonna see where some, some stuff might sprout and we're going to come up, uh, come back and dig those up and we're going to be very aggressive about not letting it take hold in the garden this year. So, if you guys are battling weeds, don't worry. We all go through it. It's uh it's something that we actually got from bad mulch. So, as a little PSA, be careful where you get your mulch. If they dig up soil and they uh, they mulch up uh, tree stumps like that, they can easily dig in little root fragments of Canadian thistle. When it gets in your garden, it's really hard to get out. All right, and then uh, these three rows here, we're gonna do about three or four rows of radishes. One thing we really wanna be mindful of this year is just being super intentional with the garden space that we're using so that we're uh, being as, uh, as concentrated as possible to grow the most food in the least amount of space and grow things that we're actually going to uh, eat and enjoy. Um, I find that sometimes we overplant radishes. They're very fun to grow, but I mean, in reality, four rows, it's about four foot by four foot it's almost 16 square feet of radishes. I don't really think you need a whole lot more than 16 square feet of radishes. And it's something that they mature so fast that we could, after we grow that, if we eat what we grow, we could always come back and in a week or two, plant some more. So uh, it's just uh, something that we're gonna try to do this year so we don't have as much, um, I don't wanna say go to waste, but we just wanna be able to eat it and, uh, and enjoy it. All right, next are the beans. The beans are all gonna go in this bed right here. And we've got quite a few. We've got the Royal Burgundy. we got the Contender, the Top Crop Provider, and Blue Lake Pole Bean. Now, the Blue Lake Pole Bean, we're actually going to put along our cattle panel, uh, cattle panel trellis right over there. 
All right, one quick tip when planting out beans is that if you plant them out too soon, oftentimes what happens, you end up with low germination rates. Despite the seeds being viable and fresh, beans don't like to be planted out when the soil is cool. Beans and corn are both prone to uh, fungus and mold, and that's why a lot of times you'll find that beans and corn are inoculated with a like a kind of like a biofungicide, and that just kind of prevents them from rotting in the soil. But if you're going the organic route, biofungicides are not always organic, and so the best route is to either wait until the soil is at least 50 degrees, or you can pre-soak your seeds. By pre-soaking, you're going to soak them for about 12 to 24 hours and you're gonna notice that they're gonna get much, much bigger in size, and that's gonna speed up the germination process so they're in the soil a lot less time before they're actually germinating. So just a quick little tip, because we do get asked a lot, you know, why, why the bean seeds have such, a, uh, have such a hard time germinating, and that's why, that'll do it. You guys, there is a Baltimore Oriole up in this tree. I'll try to show you all, it's so far up there, up in our neighbor's oak tree. I don't know if you can see it way up there. A lot of you commented on our videos saying the birds sound so pretty. That's because our neighbor Cami, she feeds uh, she feeds all the birds, and it's uh, it's like, oh, oh, there it is. You see it? It's right, right there. Do you see it? There it is. There's a Baltimore Oriole right there. I can't zoom in anymore. Whew, it's getting hot, you guys. So we just got all the zucchini and summer squash planted. Uh, so that's all planted back there. And then uh, I'm trying to think about what else we planted, but uh, you saw we got, uh, we got carrots planted right there. The rest of the bed's still not planted out yet. And we're gonna do beets for the rest of that bed. Then we're gonna do cucumbers. Well, actually we're gonna do bush beans, sorry, pole beans <laughs> right there by the kettle panel trellis. On the other side, we're gonna do uh, one row of pickling cucumbers. Then over here <laughs> by Mrs. L. My Gardener, we're gonna do one row of uh, the Wisconsin SMR, uh, or sorry, not Wisconsin SMR, the uh, Market More 76 cucumber. And then what do you think, Cindy? What do you wanna put over here? Uh, no clue. <laughs> uh, maybe, no ideas. what do you think? The garden is your uh, the garden's your canvas. What are you painting? What are you planting? I don't think of anything right now. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be a cucumber, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> I don't know yet. It's kind of nice when you just don't know what you're gonna plant. I mean, we climbing what's we're gonna do plant a, we're gonna plant a climbing bean over there. So it's too late for snap peas. Maybe uh ooh maybe a tender green cucumber. Let's see. These are all the seeds we're working with. So let's see. I got. Tender green. What do you think? Fine. Some tender green. Nice little English cucumber. What do you think? That works. I like it. All right, that's what we're going to plant. All right, we're running downstairs. We're going to grab the plants. So, got most of the seeds planted now. Now it's just time for plants. All right. Looking good. Looking real good. Wow. Okay. Take out the cabbage and cold weather stuff first. Look at this stuff. Is that amazing or what? <laughs> Whoa. All right, so we didn't get completely finished with the garden yet. We'll plant out the rest later. It's just way too hot right now. So we're going to take a break. We're going to come back out another day and finish the rest of the planting. But we did get all the cold weather stuff planted. So uh, the garden, as of right now, is just missing the tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, onion, and some of the uh, asparagus, which we're going to plant underneath the fruit trees in kind of a permaculture Ask style planting. So uh, the garden is really coming together. I'm very happy with how uh, how it's looking. As you can see, all the fruit trees are in bloom. The uh, peaches and plums already bloomed. So I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are uh, all are as well. But as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all on the next episode. See you guys. Bye.